Okay, let's get started. It's eleven o'clock. Thank you for your attention. Because I'm quite alternative for today's meeting because I'm from a university. Since yesterday, a lot of enterprises, big or small, have shared their opinions. Actually, for our universities, we're also attending CNCF event. One is because of my personal interest. The other reason is because I'm trying to promote open source education in our university. That's why I want to take this opportunity to share with you about open source education in universities. First of all, let me introduce myself. I'm from East China Normal University. I'm working in the digital engineering school, which is newly established in 2016. My research is on mainly about education, education big data, smart education technology. Actually, I'm also combining open source with the education. This is my direction. I'm going to talk about three aspects. First, about the open source new era. Why do we need to have open source in the universities? Second part is about what we have done in the universities. Third thing is the resources we have used from CNCF, including Kubernetes. So we have heard that in the morning. A lot of uh, ecosystems based on Kubernetes, a lot of university students, especially computer science and engineering students are also learning Kubernetes and other things. So how do we do this in the universities? Open source era. I also want to briefly talk about the background of open source. Actually, it's the trend. Open source is not only the whole world trend for technical development, it's also moving towards that direction. We have four key items here, connected, open, cooperation, and evolution. We can also experience that a lot in China if we are looking back for the last 20 years of China's internet industry. I think for the first two decades, we have companies like BAT, JD. And for the second decade, we have uh, Total, DD, Meituan, etc. Actually, connectivity is the foundation of China's internet in industry. We have made some summaries in the writing. And actually, the infrastructure's maturity is the foundation for all these things. Actually, through the big changes taking place in the internet industry, infrastructure maturity has caused some rise of emerging companies. Second is about the opportunities of algorithm. Because of AI, a lot of enterprises have utilized some algorithm. The third one is about data and platform. All the digital companies are platform-based companies connecting consumer end and supply side, and all the resources can be digitalized. All the users are online, on the cloud. And second keyword is opening. This is something we can also observe in the universities. We can research some open topics and promote some open ideas. We also have some open source technology and platforms. Actually, we can also use one sentence to summarize that. So it's not just competition between open source and closed source. 
it's actually the competition of large scale open source and open source projects. So it involves different kinds of factors such as technology, community, and talents. Whoever wins the development will be able to win the world. Actually, a lot of companies are doing this. They're trying to attract developers. One important example is Microsoft. They embraced open source by turning a very uh, big turn. So open source is the trend. Same thing happens in our university. In the past, we were trying to cheat database, SQL Server, and now we're seeing everything is based on open source. When we're looking at big data and AI, you have no other options in addition to open source. You can only choose open source. In that case, we need to embrace open source for collaboration with the internet, with open source ideas, coordination, and collaboration is also something we need to embrace. Actually, collaboration already has a lot of magical powers and wonderful masterpieces. As we have known, Wikipedia, which has become a must for us, like GitHub Stack Overflow, including Bitcoin or blockchain technology, it's all the same. If we are using GitHub as an example for the developers, you would find within the short few years, although it has developed for many years, but actually suddenly the developers are doing different kinds of collaboration on GitHub. And a lot of key softwares are using global collaboration to build their software including Kubernetes, etc. It's all based on collaboration of global developers. So from the university perspective, if a student graduates from the university, if they can know or they can get involved in global coordination and collaboration, you will have more competitiveness on the market. Last but not least is about evolution. I don't know whether you think evolution is a good thing or a bad thing. The good thing is that you can have different kinds of technologies emerging. So we have new millennium and DevOps in 2010. So the result is that you would find the technologies upgrading very quickly in a few years ago. You still have web PB. Now you're shifting to applet, not only WeChat mini program, but also DD and other apps. But for the language, you were de doing developing on iOS or Android. Now you're creating your software on a new platform with a new language. So our view is that the technology is moving faster, which cannot be stopped. And for the rise of every new technology, they will replace the workload of the old technology. So from the university perspective, we need to inform the students that you need to understand about the machine and control the machines. It's not just for students from computer science or engineering. Actually, for the other disciplines, the students also need to understand about that. Second thing is that we need to understand and deal with open source. Because now we're already moving to an environment where open is the mega trend. So this is a brief conclusion, interconnectivity, open cooperation and evolution will be able to create the new generation of excellent IT talents, embrace internet, open and sharing and collaborative learning. You can become the new generation of excellent IT talents with open source spirits. 
So this is the opinion from the university perspective. So we want to build the basic skill sets that are needed for the new generation. So we need to do things around these things. Here I also want to mention about AI, artificial intelligence, because in addition to open source, we have another trend, which is AI. I don't want to talk too much here. I have three photos here. The first one is about AlphaGo, which has beaten a champion Go player. And the middle picture is a cover article from the New Yorker uh, titled Dog Factory. What does that mean? Actually, in the factories with AIs, actually, you don't need to have the lights on. Only when the reporters want to interview or visit, they can turn on the lights and they can show you that we have achieved complete automation of the factory. AI and robotics have brought some impact to the existing work positions. For the third picture is a book issued by Joseph Allen titled Robot Proof. What does that mean? Because waterproof means that it can prevent you from water when you buy a garment. If the garment is waterproof, that means that you don't need to worry about water. If we're talking about robot proof, you can not be afraid of being replaced by robots in the AI era. So what do the universities need to educate the students with what kind of skills so that when we are having more robotics technology, how can they beat the competition of robots? Actually, it gives us some inspiration from aviation industry. Actually, we're not taking aviation technology as an artificial flying, it's just flying. So we should also not take technical intelligence as artificial. <coughs> it should be an intelligence enhancing human capabilities. So actually, the technology is helping humans. This is what we want to say here. And this can only be achieved through education. And from knowledge oriented to capability oriented shift, actually, we need to improve the basic skills, core skills, and overall understanding. Because the technology has very rapid iteration, because of this background, we need to take a shift. The third aspect is about the background. That was the background. Now I'm going to talk about open source education in universities and colleges, especially when it can be combined with degree education. Now we have such a scenario. In the left side, we have the industry. In the right side, we have the academia. And actually, somewhere in between, there is a gap. You would find that all of the new technologies exist in the industry, including Kobicon, CNCF. Every enterprise is promoting their own technology. Another area is the academia, which is also very dynamic. We know th that the universities and colleges are building uh, AI disciplines, big data disciplines. It seems to be very dynamic, but actually the academia is also facing some problem. Their technology cannot keep up with the trend. For someone who can really understand about the basic technology, they have luck in the faculty. So the capability of the teachers are missing. So how to bridge the gap? We think that the open source community 
is a good channel for us to break the gap. It is not only encouraging our students to participate in the open source activities or open source technology sharing, but also we need our teachers to embrace what is happening in the open source community. So that goes back to what I have mentioned, the current uh, big data or the other technical solutions, they are all open source. While you are teaching students AI, you will use uh, the related framework. While you are talking about cloud, you will use Kubernetes. But if you do not use it, that means that uh, you are kind of backward or you are lagging far behind from the current uh, technologies. So that is what we are thinking about, how to use open source so as to bridge the gap between the academic field and industrial field. On the one hand, we can transform some of the industrial or technical resources into uh, some of the courses in the college. So we are thinking about a kind of like an open source driven talent cultivation mode. And today, uh, the conference is mainly related to the infrastructure. So for the infrastructure, actually, it is kind of cloud-based uh, infrastructure. And then based on that, we think that uh, the GitHub surveys, the practical surveys, has also become kinds of infrastructure. So with people whose majors are computer science, GitHub is something they need to master naturally. It is just like you surfing online with the computer. And uh, thirdly, what we are thinking about is um, to establish a kind of uh, higher education open source um, education and innovation platform across China. So actually, this morning I have noticed that Linux Foundation has um, established some open source colleges. So if we can have such a platform which can provide the standard gate surveys or practical surveys to the students, so that will help us to do a lot of uh, applications and the students can also put some of their programs on the Git and the reports or the training materials of teachers can also be put on Git. And uh, the other data can also be put here. So actually, we have already found that for Git, it is not only code which are stored there, and a lot of uh, overseas professors began to use some of the cases they have cited in their classes on GitHub as well, so as to share it with everyone. So I think it is a trend. So this is about the specific thing we can do. First is the open source related courses. And um, this was in Cornell University, the open source software engineering. And for our university in September, we will also open such a source, a course. So it is uh, kind of program based or oh, it is uh, via the participation of some of the open source programs so as for students to realize how to cooperate in an open source program and how to understand and to learn more about the open source programs. So we can try that in our school. And uh, as far as I know, some Chinese universities have already had this kind of uh, practice or trial. They regard open source as a very important way to build the students' capabilities. 
And second is uh, what we have already done. As we have mentioned, besides Git, we also want to provide the practical courses as a kind of service. So that is uh, what we are uh, using our hands to contact more codes. And uh, for the practical courses, uh, the issue is there are too many open source softwares. And uh, if to establish the software environment, sometimes they will meet some frustrations. And cloud environment is also needed. So that is why we want to provide a one-stop IT training service platform. That is, any new framework can be applied to such a platform so as for students to get access to the open source knowledge and then they will have interest in it and then they will participate in such kind of open source technologies. And with this infrastructure, we can also organize some activities in schools. This happened in the first half of this year. I myself actually is uh, a member of our uh, open source organization and uh, actually this activity actually has um, already happened in a number of universities in Shanghai. For example, we will give some courses or give some lectures on uh, Git, on Go or TensorFlow. Uh, we will uh, later show some videos of Kubernetes. And in July, August, we will go to Beijing, Chengdu, and Taiwan, respectively. In November, we are going to have the China Open Source Annual Meeting. So with this, we can promote the open source courses in China and in the universities. So what we are further thinking about is the kind of alliance of Chinese universities for open source. So actually for last year's open source annual meeting, I have attended one of the sub forums that is open source education. At, at that time, we have invited some of the students who is responsible for the open source communities of the different universities. And uh, we hope that uh, we can have some collision of our ideas so as to share the open source activities with different universities. And also, we hope that we can build such kind of open source atmosphere so as for people who are interested to interact with each other. Last but not least is something we are also exploring, that is the Open Source Software Education Fund. We are thinking to establish a fund in the university, because the um, university itself has um, the resources. So if we can establish such kind of uh, education-oriented foundation for open source software that will better help us to cultivate open source software engineers and will also help us to integrate with the rest of the other world. Uh, the, the world. And uh, the last part is to echo to this topic. So I want to use CNCF as an example to see how to implement that in our classes, in our schools, or in our activities. So this is the practical course platforms we have already built. So I believe that uh, of you know this, um, it is a open source online course platform. So if um, the practical courses can be realized via mode that will 
better help people to gain the practical courses, and uh, that will also help teachers and students. So, yeah, we we think that we have um take some innovation. We have、um, come up with the idea of called like gig course. So we think that course like code. Can be shared or can be cooperated on Git. So a lot of the practical courses we have done are on Git. That is, teachers together with the assistants can collaborate with each other on Git, and then they will also establish the environment, the code or the description language on Git, and then. To use some website to explain, so this will help students to have a one-click opening of the courses, and、uh, very this way we actually have already iterated some of the standard courses, like the laborer、uh, studies or some of the other practical courses. So here I have an example. Before the examples, we like to talk about the different kind of learning models. The first is uh, uh, self-help learning models. That means you can choose any of the chapters, or you can do any of the experiment. And the second is kind of like root-oriented learning model. So that will help you to go through one step to the other step. And、uh, the third one is kind of like a Free exploration model. You can, if you want to play with Jupyter Notebook, you can open it by yourself. So that means anytime, anywhere, you have the access to the service and to the environment. So、uh, this is a kind of、uh, demo of our gig course. It is、uh, the tensor flow, which was in Tongji University. So the students can follow the guide to carry out the different steps, and then they can know that what can be done with the tensor flow, and、uh, can use the examples of the learning effect after using tensor flow. And the CNCF, we know that there are a lot of examples which can be used in practical courses. Because for CNCF, most of the cases are related to infrastructure. For example, Kubernetes. And、uh, this was just a video taped yesterday by、uh, some of our students. So this is a small newsletter. Once you click on, you will find some files on. The left, and then on the right,、uh, on the right hand, it is the Kubernetes environment. You can learn and master, and you can do some basic controls. So the benefit of this is、uh, you can smoothly help students to know some of the features of Kubernetes. So if you have more interest, you can do some of the Uh, more advanced functions, and、uh, we hope that we can build this as an open service, so as for software developers or for writers or for teachers to do their. Related courses on the platform. To summarize, by this way, we hope to deploy the related open source technologies in schools or universities, and then to realize some cooperation on Git, and put the links in the capcony, and then we can provide some environment. For you to quickly experience about the stuff there, so you can、uh, come up with some like、uh, hackathons or with some short videos, or include it into the other library studies. So with that, the schools or universities will have better access to the open source technologies. This is、uh, our team. Our X Lab. 
So if you have interest, you can scan the QR code here. So with that, I come to the end of my speech. Any questions? We have about five minutes for Q and A. education right now for the mainstream universities, colleges, are the students are participating a lot or very few students are participating? It's a very good question. This is the challenge we are facing right now at the very beginning. If you don't have very good marketing or you don't have very famous lectures, you don't have a very high involvement of the students, we can see in some of the activities we have carried out, we have more than 10 people or 20 people for the event we organized. This is very common. I think for open source, it's mainly based on the volunteer. We don't have any commercial promotions. So we're not pursuing for interests, but I think with the trends of open source, when everything you're doing is related with open source, I'm sure the students would note that trend. And actually, we also slowly inviting some good content or lecturers, I think that can attract the students. So sometimes there are in some universities with less advantages, they don't have many resources than they would like such uh, events, but for some other universities, when they have many resources, it's more difficult to attract the students. Are you considering about working with the industry, will, like inviting from some famous companies to run some projects in universities? In that case, would that increase the engagement? Yes, you're right. Because we're just starting, we have invited a developer from Google community to give a lecture. Now we're also working with Tencent and Alibaba. This is what we're doing with open source social. We have an expert team. We can invite those speakers. So I think this format is very good. At least gradually, the universities are trying to catch up because we are really missing that part in the universities. Thank you. Okay. I have a question for your platform. When the students are contributing to optimize the platform, are many students are doing that? How can we attract them to be the social contributor? What you're saying is also a challenge for us. Because for the platform core, it's not so stable. It's just like needless kernels. Only when you have a very stable and physical application scenario, then you will be able to attract other developers. So right now on this platform, it's mainly my students, but I think when we carry out more events and when we're promoting that through our lectures, maybe in the second half of this year, we can complete the system, then we can really open that to the public and do some promotion so that more people can join this. <coughs> This is also what we want to do with university open source. So we want to utilize some channels to promote this, but right now it's still within our own team. 
Dr. Wan, I have a question. I'm from the industry. I want to ask you if universities are establishing such a lab, it would take a lot of expenses and labor. Do you want to build together with the industry? Because the enterprises want to have talent, they can't find the right talents. If some enterprises can develop that together with you when they are in need of talents, I think there are a lot of such models. Actually, Data School of uh, East China Normal University has also established some uh, joint laboratories. Actually, they have two needs. One is for technology researchers. Second is about talents. Actually, we don't specifically work with any individual organization because for open source, we need to maintain its neutrality and openness. We want to provide this platform to engage different organizations to do the same thing on this platform. We are working with uh, Alibaba and Tencent so maybe they can put some of their open source projects on this. In that case, the students would have more choices so that their interests can be met. This is our idea. We are also very welcome to the industry field to do something on our platform. Time is up. Okay. So we can also have offline discussion.